Um, and we'll start here. So for those who uh, couldn't join yesterday, my name is Oded. I'm a SaaS business lead on the SaaS factory team. Um, so today I wanted to focus on SaaS business fundamentals and some of the key considerations along the transformation journey to SaaS. So I'll try to leave some time at the end for questions. Mm. Otherwise, you can simply drop your questions um, in the chat area and we'll get to it when um, the session ends. And again, we'll stop the recording once we get to the open discussion and Q&A session. So um, I just wanted to start with the nice quote by Andy Jesse, you know, at reInvent, he talked about um, digital transformation and how companies can transform themselves, how they can reinvent their business and their customer experience. And moving to a SaaS model is also not all about, you know, technical architecture and multi-tenancy. It's very much about transforming your organization from a business perspective. And in reality, if you're moving to SaaS, you're really making a business decision and need to think what it means to become a SaaS business. Since the way that um, your teams are going to operate, as well as the way that you deliver your solution and engage with your customers, will likely change in the new SaaS model. And I think that many companies underestimate the importance of it. And looking at companies who successfully navigated this transition, I think that they followed kind of Andy Jesse's advice here, having senior leadership team aligned and a mechanism to force the change, as well as setting top-down aggressive goals uh, for the transformation. So when I've built the slides for this session, I thought it makes sense uh, for us to cover some of the basic SaaS concepts a bit um, more than what Thomas gave yesterday in the SaaS mindset session. And have a quick look also at the market landscape, landscape and some of the trends that we see in the SaaS domain. Um, and then we can look at the transformation to SaaS uh, and to this model. And uh, based on our experience, I also wanted um, maybe to share with you um, some of the pitfalls and challenges that companies are facing in this journey to SaaS, um, which we can potentially learn from. So hopefully you'll get out of this session with a view of the areas that you should pay attention to when moving to a SaaS model. And um, we can address those again as we move forward with the program and start to dive deeper and deeper into each one of those areas. Um, so looking at the some of the fundamental elements of SaaS, I think that the first thing that we see is that SaaS is a growth model and an opportunity to drive growth with new customer segments as well as with existing customers. And then second here is that SaaS enables agility, obviously, and both. Um, and it's not only for you as the provider, but also to your customers because you offer them more options and flexibility in how they choose to buy and use your solution, right? Um, then SaaS is centered on value-based approach to customers. So we want to ensure that our product is designed to create a value that addresses customer needs and that our teams are also focused in helping customers realize this value. Um, then we look at SaaS um, or as a model that enables faster innovation at scale. So um, we can save time by focusing on the development efforts and support of really one version of our product. So it really helps us to shorten development cycles like we talked about yesterday, um, innovating faster and, and also responding more quickly to market dynamics. And then finally here at the bottom, we can see that SaaS is a model that enables us to leverage the economies of scale. Um, obviously offered by the shared environment and really allows us to reduce cost as our customers also grow. So taking into account the different fundamental elements of SaaS and the value that this model can drive to our organization, choosing a specific SaaS strategy requires us to really balance the activities according to our desired outcomes. So how much we would like to 
invest in completely refactoring our product with new features and capability versus our pressure maybe from the market to deliver uh, and deliver fast. So, um, or potentially bring our um, kind of SaaS offering to existing customers versus um, targeting new markets and customer segments. So the strategy that we choose um, will result in different flavors or um, approaches to SaaS. And we need to balance the long-term goals of the business with the near-term realities of finding a solution that will actually help us to get into the market and begin to pivot based on actual customer feedback as fast as we can, because this is a key component of, of SaaS, right? This feedback loop and also um, relying on or stop assuming what customers want, but actually um, measuring what uh, how they use our product and actually collecting feedback that helps us shape our offering. So SaaS is about running a service, right? And operating in this new model might be challenging and represent a disruptive event for uh, and for many organizations, kind of this move to SaaS is about changing how um, they think and operate as a business, right? So I see many organizations that are moving to SaaS that have transformed multiple parts of their business, and we actually help them to do so. So um, it actually requires us to manage real-time relationship with our customers based on running and operating or an oper or operations kind of that meets the SLA's expectations that customers usually usually have from uh, SaaS offerings. So every function in our business, including um, strategic planning and product development, sales and marketing and operations, must be involved to make this transition successful. So looking at these different pillars, um, strategic planning is usually where we need to build a strong business case that can lead us to a much clearer picture of our target market and the opportunity value. So we should define our approach to market and sell the SaaS offering to new customers and the incremental staffing or cost that might be associated with taking the new offering to market. Um, from my experience, at least working with many companies along this journey, um, the level of investment that we make um, in this data in the beginning, the business case, really have a significant impact on the downstream stages of the journey. Um, another super important function in the transition to a SaaS model is the product development, right? We need to think how our product organization might change in structure and in the way that they operate in order to align to the new SaaS model. Um, and potentially, you know, we want to do that to enable um, agility um, and also through uh, DevOps and CICD for uh, rapid innovation and reduce cycle times, um, which kind of think which structural and cultural changes might be needed to promote and prioritize agility and to enable collaboration between our product team and the development or operations team, right? Um, adopting SaaS technology best practices, um, so multi-tenancy and microservices or serverless architectures um, can make the product optimized for cost performance at scale. And then successful SaaS businesses um, are driven by the product itself, right? Uh, so we want to make sure that our product roadmap, roadmap, like we said before, is based on user feedback and metrics on product utilization and usage patterns rather than our assumptions. Um, if we look here at the um, left bottom here, sales and marketing. So um, we want to make sure that our organization is well prepared to sell the new offering. And it might require us to reassess our structure and culture or um, force us to move to a more um, product-driven approach. So how our sales and marketing teams can work together with customer success organizations to successfully engage with the customers and maximize some of the metrics that are important for us in SaaS. And, and Tomas will talk about it in, in one of his sessions later on 
um, next week, I think. So customer lifetime value and also focus on retention and growth. Um, so this is a key component of how our sales and marketing teams are also operating. Um, from an operations perspective, um, you know, working together with product teams, we often say that running and operating the service is the business in, in a SaaS model. So customers um, in SaaS really have high expectations for availability and reliability. And with the ability to switch relatively easily from one product to another, because you know, in SaaS, we don't have really long-term commitment. So we need to make sure that um, from an operational perspective, we really meet their expectations and have a reliable product with um, zero downtime. So moving to this uh, service mindset um, from one-time product delivery to delivering a service ongoing, um, we understand that there is an organizational transformation that is required. So first, I think that it's important maybe for us here um, to lay out transformation and what it really means. So from our perspective, a movement to a SaaS model really represents a transformation in how we build, operate, deliver, and engage with our customers. And we actually see SaaS transformation really represents a number of different transformations like you can see here on the slide. So looking at digital technology, business, and cultural. One of the things that we've looked at is that SaaS really represents uh, maybe perhaps all of these transformations in one go, right? And we need, um, or we find at least uh, many organizations that are moving to SaaS um, need to transform multiple parts of their business and go deeper to address in how they run and operate in the new model um, to actually address the needs of, of the new SaaS delivery model. Um, one trend that we see is that organizations really um, underestimate the work in the transition. And, and we'll talk about it later. And again, I think we're here also to support you with that. So. Um, first, I wanted maybe to share with you some key findings from a recent Forrester paper um, which was conducted across um, how many, more than 2,400 companies. Um, one of the interesting areas that this study showed is that SaaS is a leading strategy in their investment in digital transformation. So as you can see here from the data, SaaS continues to be the center of this transition. Right, so organizations are looking at SaaS to really be the kind of core engine of their own transformation. And I think that um, mainly for the benefits that it provides, and we talked about those uh, yesterday also, you know, mainly around agility and, and other benefits that the SaaS model provides. And the data here really uh, suggests that customers are looking at SaaS as the preferred approach to um, software and services and to lead their transformation as a company or as a whole, right? Um, what's interesting though, is that when you go and look at the data, you find that there is a really slow and steady evolution in how organizations are adopting SaaS. And um, companies estimate, like you see here on the slide, that SaaS will represent about 40% of their software revenue in three to five years. I think that many would suggest that we should be farther along, right? If SaaS really provides um, so much benefits and um, and it's a huge growth driver uh, for the end customers as well as for us as the software providers. But then um, for those reasons, we would maybe expect those numbers to be higher. And I think that brings me back to the truth that it's a challenging journey um, with many pitfalls along the way. And this is why maybe we see a um, relatively slow movement to this model. Um, so looking at the journey to SaaS, one of the things that we see is that is so difficult maybe is the starting point. Um, where you start from really matters. And over the past few years, we've had the opportunity to work with a wide range of organizations and I think, you know, they told us that they're looking uh, for a framework that will help them plan 
and prepare for the transformation. So we've built a white paper that outlines kind of the framework to provide guidance uh, through those four specific phases that you see here on the slide. So we see, um, you know, business planning, um, product strategy and roadmap development, um, defining the scope uh, for a minimum viable service or minimum viable product, and then launch and go to market of the new SaaS offering. So we tried to simplify the journey with those four uh, key sta stages that are not necessarily linear, uh, but we see them as uh, key components of the transition to SaaS. Um, and as you can imagine, those affect both our business and our technical teams. Um, but And then, you know, there are many challenges along this movement to a SaaS delivery model. And I wanted to highlight maybe a few here, which um, might, or at least we probably want to pay attention to and, and learn from. So, and by the way, the, the white paper, we will share it with you um, together with the other resources at the end of the week. Um, so looking at some of the common challenges organizations uh, face when they move to SaaS, um, the reality is that this move to SaaS may be very tough um, journey to some of them. And I tried maybe to outline here a few reasons why. So the first one is the fact that this journey has many paths to it. And I think, you know, Tomas mentioned it yesterday. Many organizations might know what the end start or what the end state um, of SaaS um, that they want to get to, but there are many ways to get there which depends very much on the competitive landscape or as well as the um, current state and priorities that they have um, other parameters which uh, make the SaaS journey different for each organization. Um, the next thing is that SaaS really touches every dimension of the organization. So product, customer success, sales, marketing. And uh, we see many organizations just struggle with how they should um, set up their teams to be successful in this new model. And obviously, anything that is related to an organization on change is very destructive and um, many times kind of um, applies many challenges for the org those organizations. So the third thing that uh, we see here is the revenue model and moving from a traditional um, contract-based model to a subscription-based model and figuring out what will be the impact of this transition um, to the revenue model as well as to the cash flow and cost uh, structure might be challenging as well. And lastly, um, the cultural change. And in this movement to SaaS, we see that our teams um, collaborate in different ways. And uh, the touch points um, our product team have with the development teams are different. Customer success uh, many times is something completely new to many organizations and they need to build this team from scratch. Um, the way our sales team work with other teams along the entire life cycle um, of the customers with us is different. And here again, changing culture uh, might be a very uh, disruptive event for many organizations. So it is understandable that our organizations have a um, tough time with this journey to SaaS. And I try to uh, capture maybe six um, common pitfalls that are hindering SaaS success. So these are not the only six that we should uh, be thinking about, but these are common ones that I think we can learn from. And obviously, um, I would love to hear whether uh, those are aligned also with uh, some of the challenges that you're facing uh, maybe at the end of this session. So um, the first is um, that if there is one thing maybe that I would recommend to focus on is that um, many organizations uh, start this discussion of moving to a SaaS model from a technical discussion, right? How we're going to um, isolate tenants, uh, what should be the data partitioning strategy, and so on. Um, but if you're moving to SaaS, 
again, you are really making a business transformation decision. And therefore, we recommend to take a step back from all those technical questions that you see here on the left side and think about it through the lens of the business and uh, think what it actually means to us to become a SaaS business. And this is where a good start would be probably by thinking about some of the questions that you see here on the right side of the slide, how this model will help us grow our business, how can we uh, innovate faster, stay ahead of our competitors, and so on. Um, just as an example here, um, you know, F5, that our team had the opportunity to work with on their um, cloud services with um, of SaaS offerings. So they um, had, uh, what, what they've done is that, um, like you see here on the quote from uh, Francois, their CEO, is that uh, they carved out kind of a startup-like organization within F5 to establish a new business model that will support the delivery of the SaaS offering. Um, so with the leadership team aligned and by focusing on both the business and the technology strategies early on, um, they really were able to successful uh, to be successful kind of in the transition uh, to SaaS and, and really accelerate um, time to market like you see here also on, on the quote. Uh, obviously, for some of you, it might not be relevant to create another startup within the startup organization, but um, the idea is that, you know, understanding that um, the existing mindset of the people um, or changing the culture, the existing culture and the mindset of the people and culture might be very challenging. So you better go and maybe build even a um, small group of people within your organization that will be focused on the new SaaS solution. And this really helps them to be successful and maybe move faster to the market. Um, the other challenge uh, for many organizations is that they often think that they have more time than they really do. So many have a really long multi-year process that they um, think that they have kind of captive market uh, with a good customer base and a solid revenue stream. Um, but the challenge is that we cannot get good customer feedback with such a long um, cycle time. Um, we need to try to get a minimum viable product out there um, which can tell us whether we are building the right thing and whether we are creating the right experience for our customers. And in parallel, you know, if we take the time, some other competitors can show up and start getting uh, momentum where we might find ourselves afterwards in a catch-up mode. So really we want to have something out there as soon as we can to start collecting this data and feedback from our customers and pivot um, as necessary. Um, so here, we just wanted to share this example from uh, Cohesity and uh, in the release of data management as a service, um, they focused on one initial use case with their MVP um, that was designed to deliver value to their customers and accelerate their time to market. So instead of optimizing the product to make it perfect um, kind of before customers can have the opportunity to get their hands on it. This approach really helped Cohesity here to quickly validate the potential opportunity and align the product roadmap according to actual customer feedback, um, which is very important. And then um, another key area I would pay attention to is are there in, under investing in agility. So I think um, I saw this in, uh, you know, the talk that uh, door from all cloud had um, yesterday, but um, organizations that are moving to SaaS really want better agility and they want to enjoy the full value proposition, um, <clears throat> meaning kind of being able to shorten development cycles and innovate faster, uh, faster and maybe respond quickly uh, to market dynamics. Um, but if you want to get there, we need to invest in agility from day one of the journey, and it should be the core value of our system. So we want to track key metrics that can help us measure our performance here and whether we are actually agile as we want to be. Um, so then uh, when, we got, when we start to get some of um, the maybe traction 
that we expect to get and, and grow our customer base and, and onboard new tenants fast, we've already invested in agility and we are kind of ready for the potential spike in growth that, that might come. Um, so here, you know, I just find out some of the work that I uh, personally did, did with uh, CyberArk, but it's a good example here when um, they built their privileged cloud, cloud uh, SaaS offering, they invested in how the system is built um, to ensure that the teams are focused on achieving the agility and innovation um, that they wanted to. So they actually defined key metrics that help them measure cycle time for a feature release, um, setup time, uh, time to respond to issues, and other well-defined metrics to assess and prioritize operations and agility very early on in their journey to SaaS. Um, so the fourth kind of pitfall um, that I want to mention, another thing that you know, I think we touched on somehow, but uh, very important, and therefore I wanted to mention it before, but the movement to this as a service model. So some companies may stay in the product mindset where they view this as a product that they've built and customers, um, you know, um, might like it or not, um, but moving to the service mindset, we look at the holistic, customer experience with our service, including how quickly we uh, support customers, how we engage with customers and help them to adopt features and expand their usage, uh, what is the operational agility that we provide and so on. Um, so yes, you know, we need to build the right thing for the customers, but their experience with us is also about um, kind of a service experience, which means that we need to make sure that we have a good experience for them to succeed in this whole new um, SaaS mindset and, and the way that we engage and support them. So here is an example I want to bring up. Um, BMC that we work with um, on their uh, Cloud M or Control M uh, solution, and uh, they really embraced um, the as a service mindset and defined uh, customer journey in details to focus on customer outcomes and the go-to market and um, the customer success models that can actually create an excellent customer experience uh, for their end customers. Um, the other pitfall um, that's really common is and it's connected maybe to the first pitfall that I presented, but it's that companies um, think of the move to SaaS as a technology strategy. And if a side effect maybe of thinking like that is that they um, start working on the development piece um, in the beginning and only eventually down the road think how uh, it will affect other parts of the, of the organizations and how the sales team will change, how marketing will change, and so on. So um, what we see is that this delay in the business strategy ends up being a challenging um, thing for organizations, and they, they find themselves kind of operating in a SaaS model without this as a service experience for their customers. Um, and this is why we want to pull the go-to-market planning and the business strategy close to the time where we start our development efforts. And it should have, um, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be um, exactly on the same time, but it should be aligned with the timeline. And we want to um, start these, uh, these efforts, both of them, as early as possible. Um, when we work with NASDAQ and help them with their business transformation, um, I think, you know, they started to train thousands of their teams um, on the importance of cultural transformation across, in, across kind of all parts of the organizations. And they actually restructured and enabled cross um, functional collaboration between their teams and deployed uh, agile models that really helped them um, innovate faster I think they did a nice work together with our team, um, but really they started to think about the business strategy very early on or very close to the development efforts that they have. Um, and the last pitfall that I wanted to highlight is that 
when we go and build a new SaaS solution, we really want to use our time and energy on the IP of our solution. And we don't want to work on um, efforts that do not directly map to customer value. So for example, identity at the top here, yes, you know, we have to have a way for customers to log in and authenticate, but our team shouldn't be focusing on building an identity solution. We can use a third party identity solution and leverage the value that they can bring to us. And similarly, we can use, um, you know, consulting partners um, and AWS Forcer to really um, help us kind of build the knowledge for this transformation and staying focused on our core solution. Um, just as a nice example here, um, you know, GA Teles is one of the customers that I uh, had the opportunity to work with. Um, and they really leveraged AWS SaaS Boost, and we'll have a session about SaaS Boost, um, I think, next week. Um, it's an open source reference environment, um, and they used it to launch their, uh, launch their solution on AWS. And they actually, um, you know, you can see it here, but they, it accelerated their move to SaaS. And they also used uh, other third-party solution for um, billing as well as for in-product marketing um, resources and tools to kind of trigger point-in-time campaigns and actions that can improve their customer experience. So they used many uh, third-party solutions and really stayed focused on their um, IP. So some of the key takeaways that I wanted to highlight um, here you know, the first thing is that hopefully it resonated with you, um, but this idea that SaaS is a business model and we should be thinking about SaaS through the lens of how we are going to operate and market and sell our SaaS offering and the entire experience we'll provide to our customers. Related to that, maybe in uh, maybe um, connecting again to the quote from Andy Jesse that I showed in the beginning, we see success um, where the SaaS initiative is being driven by the executive team. And with, when it's a uh, top-down strategic decision with aggressive goals that we have set for this transformation. The next thing is um, prioritizing agility, which is very important, again, in a SaaS model, and especially in, uh, early in the process, like we said, making sure we are ready for a growth spike that might come along the way. Um, and hopefully it was a theme throughout maybe here, but uh, we're building a service, uh, not a product. So we're focused on the customer experience and delivering value on a daily basis, which are core dimensions of an as a service mindset uh, that we want to have. Um, and then starting is difficult and um, not to mention that the journey itself and the challenges that we saw might uh, that might come with it. So uh, the motivation uh, for the change has to be aligned with uh, customers um, and a growth opportunity that we see in the market. Um, and then lastly here, I uh, really encourage most of uh, the companies that transform to a SaaS model to use help and leverage support um, of experts um, outside of the organizations. And we are definitely here to support you with any help that you might need along this journey. So I'm really happy and, and uh, looking forward to working with each one of you. Um, if you want to learn uh, more about business transformation to a SaaS model, I just gathered here some of the content that might help you and some links of uh, thought leaders uh, as well as organizations um, in the SaaS community. Um, and then some books that I think that are really um, um, maybe for me, it was helpful, um, at least with the companies that I uh, helped. I think that they found those um, resources pretty helpful. I think the, the technology as a service playbook talks about the entire transformation to uh, from a traditional model to a SaaS model, um, and it's written by TSIA uh, founders, thought leaders in the SaaS domain. And then um, uh, uh, Phoenix uh, project specifically talks about continuous development and CI/CD. 
Uh, the challenger sale um, is another one that it's type kind of outcome-based and value-based selling methods, uh, talking about the change in culture and sales motions when moving to a SaaS model. Uh, Lean Startup is the one that focused on an MVP approach, kind of, you know, testing uh, your product before launching and creating feedback loops, uh, like we said, which is very important in a SaaS model. And then um, Customer Success Book um, is the one that if you want to have a look at kind of the customer success role and responsibility, it's a really nice um book that also talks about how to measure the, this team performance, what should be the KPIs of these teams, and so on. And lastly, here is the white paper that I talked about with uh, SaaS Journey framework that we've built, and uh, we will share with you the link together with the other resources. Um, yeah, so thank you. I think you know this was a high-level overview of some of the key areas in SaaS transformation.